Dear Kristen, good evening. Hope you're okay. You are sent by the communications company as we will be interested in exploring the possibility of working together for a new Unilever product that we believe is very close to your philosophy. Thank you very much in advance. And the last brand is Unilever, with plantations built on deforested land. So they're contributing to the destruction of rainforest and also responsible for the deaths of animals that are already on the brink of extinction. Thank you so much for that, Unilever. You really are a piece of Hey, I'm Kristen and welcome to my channel. So I was recently contacted by a PR company that is looking for influencers to advertise a new Unilever product. And little did they know that I've made an entire video on my channel dedicated to why I boycott PNG, Unilever, Nestle, and a few other companies. So Unilever is in that video and they're now presented in a very positive light. Unilever wanted to pay me money so that they can advertise themselves on my channel and you know what i have a big heart i'm a generous person so i'm gonna make a video all about unilever for free they don't even have to pay me i'm like the influencer version of mother Teresa. so the products that unilever wanted me to promote are a line of vegan hair care products that are packaged in somewhat recycled plastic and the line is called Love, Beauty, and Planet. Kind of sounds like something Jenna Marbles Greyhound Kermit would say, like, Love, Beauty, and Planet. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> it's so dumb. I imagine them all in like a business meeting and the boss is like, we need to come up with a name for our new vegan eco-friendly beauty products. And then there's this other dude like, but we don't know anything about vegan and eco-friendly products. Scott, you're fired. And then Sermit pops up from the corner and he's like, Okay, I have an idea. What do vegan people like? They like the planet. And what product do we make? Beauty product. So let's name it Love, Beauty, and Planet. That's a great idea, Sermit. You're promoted. <laughs> so you're probably now thinking, Kristen, stop being a okay they're trying why are you complaining i don't want to complain okay i really don't i don't enjoy boycotting brands and having a less variety of products to choose from it's not something that i have fun doing but it's something that honestly the way that these companies behave and their actions make it morally impossible for me to support them so let's get into it then. So who is Unilever? They are an Anglo-Dutch conglomerate and they're the world's largest consumer goods company. They produce products from ice cream to soups, deodorants, sauces, cleaning products, tea, shampoos, mayonnaise, soap, laundry detergents, and refreshments. They are used by two and a half billion people daily and they made 11 billion dollars in profit just last year so unilever's current ceo is alan jope he makes whew, 10 million dollars a year and also he kind of looks like a lizard person so because a few people always complain that i'm too negative let's start with the positives about them so in 2014 in 600 factories they managed to eliminate all non-hazardous waste and you know like good job couldn't find any information about any years past 2014 so and they also tried to eliminate gender stereotypes through their acts marketing campaign about masculinity man who needs looks when you got the books wow i just saw two gay guys in an advertisement i guess i'm not a homophobe anymore becky unchain our boy from the basement i'm open-minded now <laughs> Okay, that's getting dark. Now let's ease into the problems that I have with Unilever. So this isn't by any means terrible, but it's something that I did find pretty funny on their website. They had this article about why empowering women is essential for economy. It's a great sentiment, but when you're a company that goes from having one cis white old male CEO to updating to just a slightly younger cis white male CEO. 
it doesn't seem like you're really practicing what you're preaching. And I'm not saying I want to see more women in positions of power, taking advantage of capitalism, exploiting workers and destroying the environment. No, I just think that this is a very pretentious article. And if they are all about empowering women, then maybe hire one as you're seeing. Oh. But as a matter of fact, they really do not empower women and they don't believe in empowering women or people or just anyone as a matter of fact. One of the worst crimes committed by Unilever is in Kodai Canal in India. 45 employees and 18 children in a thermometer plant died from exposure to mercury. And also speaking of empowering women, in 2011 it was found out that African workers had to bribe their supervisors in order to stop unwanted sexual advances from them. Is that how you empower women? By giving them bosses that sexually harass them? Also, Amnesty International uncovered that Unilever, Nestle, and P&G were using child and forced labor in palm oil plantations. So in those palm oil plantations, women earned as little as two and a half dollars per day. They worked for long hours. There were children as young as eight working in these plantations, doing very hazardous physical labor. And many workers were suffering from severe injuries from paraquat, which is a toxic chemical used as an herbicide that is banned in the EU. And this is only a small list of what these workers had to endure in these palm oil plantations. Moreover, Unilever sells a lot of products that contain very hazardous ingredients. Ingredients that can cause cancer, organ system toxicity that is non-reproductive, immunotoxicity, endocrine disruption, developmental and reproductive toxicity, and a lot more. Also one of their hair products violated air pollution laws in California, where they paid a $362,000 fine for releasing 17 tons of excess volatile organic compounds into the air, which is an ingredient for smog. In my opinion, a $362,000 fine doesn't really cover it. I think what would be fair is if you release 17 billion tons of this toxic compound into the air, then you might as well pay 17 tons of gold. <laughs> Just pay, pay us back in 17 tons of gold. That would be great. So one of the worst things about Unilever is that they are, along with Nestle, one of the top plastic polluters in the Philippines. And you really don't have to travel that far to start finding Unilever products. Just thrown around in the street, in the forest, in the beaches, and in the water. Unilever has been packaging their products in plastic for almost a century now, and they're really not taking responsibility for the environmental pollution that they have caused. Unilever, along with Nestle and P&G and Coca-Cola and many other companies, have created a plastic pollution crisis that we are in right now. This is destroying communities, it's harming marine life, and it's affecting the health of many people. They've contributed to the destruction of the environment globally, and they're not taking responsibility for that. But perhaps, quite possibly, one of the worst things that they've done recently is when they threatened to pull online ads from toxic content, so like fake news, and then a word that because of Unilever, I'm not allowed to use because this video is gonna get demonetized, so I'm just gonna have to spell it out for any viewer that is visually impaired. So the word is T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-M. And this is the quote that they gave. Unilever do not want to advertise on platforms which do not make a positive contribution to society. I cannot deal with this level of hypocrisy, honestly. I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> Before I get into my rant about how hypocritical this all is, first off, let's just talk about how Unilever and other companies like Unilever single-handedly just basically censored the entire internet. They said, we do not want our ads playing on toxic content, which later on resulted in them pulling their ads from platforms like YouTube, for example. And then YouTube had to set really strict policies to create advertiser-friendly content that isn't toxic. This toxic content boycott 
has resulted in silencing thousands upon thousands of videos with content that is actually educational, informational, and definitely not toxic. The boycott that Unilever did on toxic content has resulted in you having less interesting things to watch and read online, basically. And that, my friends, makes me concerned. Because if Unilever has the power to control the information that we receive, that's not good. So let me get into why I think Unilever is so hypocritical by doing this. So first, because there's a lot of words that I can't use anymore without my video getting demonetized, I'm gonna come up with uh, alternative words that are advertiser friendly. So for the word T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-M, instead of using that word, I'm just gonna say constipation. Wonderful, that's very ad friendly. Hopefully we're gonna get some ads about constipation relief on this video. Let me know if that happens. Unilever is a constipating organization. Why? Let's read the definition of constipation. So, constipation is defined as premeditated, politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by subnational groups or clandestine agents. What does that mean? So in general, it's classified as the use of violence or of the threat of violence in the pursuit of political, religious, ideological, or social objectives. We would classify Unilever as pursuing ideological objectives and where ideology is defined as the maximization of capital. And the pursuit for maximization of capital is resulting in the use of violence or the threat of violence. They are contributing to the deaths of multiple people as we saw in the Kodai Canal incident in India where multiple people were poisoned, children and workers died that's violence. The fact that they're using chemical ingredients in their products that I mentioned before cause so many different illnesses, that's violence. Acts reaching more than the immediate target victims and also directed as targets consisting of a larger spectrum of society. And yes, we've seen that in factories where not only workers in the factories are exposed to dangerous chemicals, but also when those chemicals leak into the environment, polluting water and soil and having a negative impact on entire communities around those factories. Also with the chemical ingredients in their hairsprays that were polluting the air in California and anywhere else that those hairsprays were being used. So they're not only negatively impacting the consumer, but also everyone living in the area around the product that is being used and also committing crime that is made illegal by legislation or crime that is inherently immoral or wrong. So as we saw in California, committing a crime that actually is illegal or committing crimes that are inherently immoral or wrong are literally all the crimes that I've listed in this video. So according to Wikipedia, Unilever is a constipating organization whether they like it or not. So yeah, thank you, but no thank you for the sponsorship, Unilever. A vegan hair care line that is packaged in recycled plastic just doesn't cut it for me. If you wanna be more woke and eco-friendly and sustainable, you should start by cleaning up the mess that you created, that you basically turned our planet into your own personal dumpster ground so that you can make 11 billion dollars a year in profit. Maybe then I'll think about a sponsorship and promoting you in a positive light on my channel. Until then, Unilever, clean up your mess. So do you think that Unilever is a constipating organization? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to help me create more content like this, please do consider becoming a patron. So yeah, huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel and I will see you guys next week. Bye.